Hello, I'm Pastor Greg Williams, and this is my wife Brenda from Grace Lutheran Church in Hendersonville. It's a joy to be with you again for a time of uh, reflection and scripture and, and song and, and hopefully refreshment for you uh, wherever you are and whenever you're watching this. Um, we invite you to uh, prepare a, a bit of a sacred space if you've got your Bible and a candle to light or a lamp to turn on. Uh, go ahead and do that. We've lit our candle. The candle reminds us that Jesus is present and that Christ is the light of the world. And we gather in his presence. Let's pray before we read scripture. Loving God, still our hearts and minds. Fill us with your spirit that we might focus on your word and glean what you would have us learn for our lives and our faith is your disciples this day. Amen. You know, there's a lot of division and disunity and squabbling between families, between groups, small and large across our country right now. You probably noticed that in news reports and maybe even in your own family. You know, it's... Um, more than just, uh, you want veggie pizza or pepperoni pizza. You know, we've had that discussion before here. It's always vegetarian, right, Brenda? Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, those discussions get a little more, you know, a little more heated uh, when we start talking about politics or um, some of the uh, protests across our country. And so I picked today's lesson to remind us that even within the church family, we have unique viewpoints. We have diverse viewpoints. But we have one thing that centers us, one thing that unites us. And so I picked a portion from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, a church that was just fraught with division over how to be Christian in that formerly pagan town, city how to live out their faith, what was right, what was not acceptable. And they even squabbled about who baptized them, who was their leader. And Paul writes to correct that and remind them that we all have the same foundation of faith. So let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm going to read verses... 1 through 9, and then skip down to 18 through 23. Paul writes, And so, brothers and sisters, I do not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants, working together. You are God's field, God's building. See, Paul calls us calls those folks out. You know, when you're behaving according to the ways of the world, you're of the flesh. You're letting human priorities, human structures, human boundaries creep in to the church where there is no boundary. We are one people. Unique, yes, but one people in Christ. On the foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ. That's one of our core values at Grace, remember. Finding unity in Christ. And then a few verses at the end of the chapter, verses 18 through 23. Paul says, Do not deceive yourselves. If you think you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, 
He catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast about human leaders, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all belong to you and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. We all belong to Christ. And in this year where tensions are high, discussions sometimes are hard to have when we have different opinions, it doesn't matter what our opinions are. We need to remember that we are children of God, sinners, saint and sinner, forgiven together that we belong to Christ. And remember that and treat each other with that kindness of heart, recognizing and honoring and respecting viewpoints and opinions that may well differ. And that's okay because we are one in Christ. And Brenda, of course, found another wonderful song to remind us of that. It's uh, one from the hymnal. It's been around a while, I think. And it's called, In Christ There Is No East or West. In Christ there is no east or west, in Him no south or north, but one great family bound by love throughout the whole wide earth. In Him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord close binding humankind. Join as disciples in the faith, whatever your race may be, who serve each other in Christ's love are surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both East and West, in Him meet South and North. All Christly souls are one in Him throughout the whole wide earth. In Christ all souls are one in Him. We are one in Him, and I want to encourage you, challenge you, to remember that. And to, to have discussions where you disagree, but remember that you are children of God, and to see issues through the eyes of faith, not through the eyes of human structures or, or human viewpoints. But try as you can to look at it through faith. How does the Word of Jesus apply here? What's Paul's teaching? say about how I should behave or interact. Because that's what sets us as Christians apart from the rest of the world. Let's pray. Loving God, we know that throughout the centuries there's been differences of opinion and divisions in the church over things big and small. In this time where divisions are so for forefront in the news and around us, Remind us that we are all your beloved children. Give us grace for one another. Give us faith in your Holy Spirit to help us remember that we are one family and to treat one another with respect and to look and wrestle with issues and topics out of the basis of our faith and not partisan, broken, short uh, viewpoints of the world. Give us courage because we'll need your presence to journey and shepherd us along the way. And we know that you'll be with us because that's what you promised. Give us unity in you, Lord. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to share and pray in the Lord's Prayer together. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as we normally do, we close with Luther's evening prayer. Join us. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins, where we have done wrong, and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. As the song reminded us, may we, may you, remember that in Christ there's no east or west, no south or north, but in Him we are all one great fellowship, saint and sinner, bound together by Christ. God bless you, God be with you, and we'll see you again soon. Bye now.